The second of our paths to the genetic paradigm of cancer uh, involved the recognition that there are external causes of cancer and that many of these causes act by damaging DNA, by causing mutations in our genes. As long ago as 1761, Dr. John Hill, a physician in London, noticed an association between the use of snuff uh, and the occurrence of uh, cancer of the tongue, jaw, and throat. We now call snuff by the disarming term smokeless tobacco, but its consequences are, can be just as onerous as illustrated uh, by this figure. Soon thereafter, Percival Pott made a landmark observation. Um, he recognized that scrotal cancer was very common in chimney sweeps in London, and he made a leap, an induction, uh, and attributed this incidence of cancer to the soot that was accumulating on, on the skin of the chimney sweeps. With the emergence of the Industrial Revolution, uh, more and more external causes of cancer became apparent, mainly from large industrial exposures or, in the case of x-rays, um, uh, in the case of experimentalists who were working in the er with x-rays in the early days uh, after uh, their discovery. To give you a sense of the power of these observations, consider the chemical 2-naphthalamine, uh, which we now know can cause bladder cancer. Um, individuals who have, uh, who work with this chemical and have exposure for at least five years are almost guaranteed of having bladder cancer. Here's a list of some of the other examples. And the point of this list is to dramatize the great variety of cancers that can emerge uh, from external causes, from exposure uh, to industrial chemicals and physical agents. But could this be replicated in experiment? Could it be proven that these external agents were causing the cancer? In 1950, Katsus Katsusaburo Yamagiwa reported that he could induce skin heat cancer in rabbit ears by the repeated application of coal tar. This was a riveting discovery. Uh, it was the first direct demonstration that a chemical could elicit cancer. Yamagigua was ecstatic over his discovery, so much so that he wrote uh, a commemorative haiku uh, in his own beautiful calligraphy. Roughly translated, the haiku leads, reads, cancer was produced Proudly, I walk a few steps. By 1938, a great variety of external agents, mainly from industrial sources, had been identified as causes of cancer. And the thought that, that there are external causes of cancer was well established. Now, how do these agents work? Well, the first clue came from the work of one of America's great scientists, H.J. Muller who, working with fruit flies, discovered that x-rays cause mutations in the genes of the fruit fly. Some years later, American scientist Bruce Ames discovered, using a very clever bacterial test, that many carcinogens are mutagenic. Not all, but many. 